Hi everyone, it's Gus from Pie My Life Up. In this video, I'm taking a look at the Banana Pi 2 vs. the Raspberry Pi 2. If you're thinking of buying one of these devices, then hopefully this video will give you all the information you need. To start off, I will give a quick insight into each of the devices and their main features. Later on in the video, we'll take a look at more into the specifics, such as the hardware, software, and what you can expect to get out of each of the devices. The Raspberry Pi is probably the world's most popular microcomputer board. It is able to run a range of Linux distributions and Windows IoT, or Internet of Things. The board is developed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation, a UK charity with a goal to advance computer science education. The board features plenty of GPIO pins and other hardware slots that you can connect, add-on boards and peripherals too. You will find there are quite a few official peripherals for this device such as cameras, sensors and even a touch screen. We'll go more into the hardware in a bit. Much like any computer, you will need to install an operating system. This is done via a micro SD card or SD card for the older Pies or a USB stick. Again, we'll go more into the software later on. If you want to learn more about the Raspberry Pi and the different variations, be sure to check out my video on what is a Raspberry Pi. The Banana Pi 2, much like all the devices we look at, is about the size of a credit card. It is developed by the Banana Pi team over in China. This board offers a good range of hardware featuring some pretty cool stuff such as onboard Wi-Fi, a 1 gigabit per second Ethernet port, infrared sensor and much more. You will also find a good variety of operating systems that you're able to install. This includes a version of Android and also, much like Raspberry Pi, you will need to install the operating system onto an SD card and insert it into the Banana Pi for it to operate. One of the biggest differences in hardware is the fact that the Banana Pi 2 has onboard Wi-Fi, while the Raspberry Pi doesn't. This means a lot as it can free up an entire USB slot for something else. You will also find that the Banana Pi can also be powered either over a micro USB cord or a DC power adapter. The Banana Pi 2 also has an infrared sensor that allows you to be able to interact with IR devices such as remotes. This would be incredibly handy when setting up a media center or something else where you want to remotely control something via IR. The Banana Pi also has an onboard microphone. Again, this can be incredibly handy if you plan on doing projects that require the capture of sound. Most of the other pieces of hardware are very similar, such as the quad-core processor, 1GB of RAM, audio out, HDMI out, GPIO pins, 4 USB slots, CSI and DSI ports, and so on. The default operating system for Banana Pi is Bananian, and is a branch off Debian. The focus of this operating system is to provide a lightweight environment for software packages that don't require a desktop environment. This is great for projects such as web servers, network attached storage and a torrent box as it frees up a lot of memory that may have been consumed by the operating system. However, this also means if you want a desktop environment, you may want to look at other operating systems they support such as Android 4.4, Raspbian, Fedora, and Ubuntu. All these support a desktop environment. Raspbian is the default operating system for the Raspberry Pi and has recently been updated so it now branches off Debian Jesse. Before it was only Wheezy. This OS provides you with a relatively good user-friendly UI and also a decent amount of starting applications. This is pretty much the only operating system I have used up until recently. The Raspberry Pi also supports many other operating systems such as Windows 10, IoT, Ubuntu Mate, Snappy Ubuntu Core and a few others. One of the biggest things missing from the Raspberry Pi in terms of operating system is a good version of Android. There are many ways of installing it but they all don't perform very well. If you're only just starting out in the microcomputer world, then you're probably wondering how easy is it to get started with the device. When I was comparing with Banana Pi and the Raspberry Pi 2, I found there was quite a few differences when I was setting up the devices. I will briefly mention some of them now. Starting out with the Raspberry Pi is getting easier and easier. With cool kits such as the Cano kit and other bundles, you can get started pretty fast. Most kits you find have pre-installed SD cards and all the 
bits and pieces you need. If you go the other route and prefer to buy everything separately, you'll find there is a lot of tutorials and information on what you need to do and how you can go about doing it. If you don't look up any information, then you might find yourself a little overwhelmed with installing the software and buying the correct power adapter and various amount of other issues you may come across. The Banana Pi is very similar to the Raspberry Pi in terms of starting out, but you'll find there is a lot less help out there. You will find that there aren't really any pre-made kits, so you will need to set up the SD card yourself and purchase the right equipment. I will go more into the help and communities you can find online around each device in a bit. Since these devices are very much the same, you will find that the projects don't vary very much. I will quickly mention some examples of the projects that you can do with either device. A web server, robotics, network attached storage, motion sensing, camera related projects, torrent box, and much more. The community around the Banana Pi is a lot smaller than the Raspberry Pis. You'll find that there is activity and help over at their main forums. You will also find help on various Linux forms and some websites. My biggest gripe about the Banana Pi is how many different sites there are. If you do a quick Google search, you'll be presented with quite a few different sites and may all look very similar very hard to tell which one is actually the official website. The community around the Raspberry Pi is pretty large and you have a lot of activity over at the main forums and their official website. You also have a large collection of bloggers, YouTubers and other techies who produce a constant stream of content for you to follow. The Banana Pi is slightly more expensive to buy, sitting at roughly 50 US dollars. You also need to buy all the essential equipment such as a power supply, micro SD card and any other peripherals you require. The Raspberry Pi sits at about 35 US dollars and much like the Banana Pi you still need to buy all the essential equipment. By the time you add all the extra parts, the Raspberry Pi 2 still comes out to be more affordable than the Banana Pi. Then again, this depends on what equipment you buy and whether you go for the lesser or higher quality equipment. You're probably after a winner out of a Banana Pi versus Raspberry Pi comparison. Whilst each of the devices have their similarities, there are some defining points that you should take into consideration. Now, I wouldn't discount the Banana Pi completely as it does some things really well. So some of the pros I found was it has an onboard Wi-Fi, onboard mic, an IR sensor, two power options, fast Ethernet, and of course Android. Now some of the downsides to this device is the small community, there's, there's not as many accessories, and there's a confusing amount of websites with a similar name. Raspberry Pi wins on quite a few points and only has one con I could think of. So some of the pros about the Raspberry Pi is that it has a good operating system support, lots and lots of projects, a large community, lots of add-on boards and accessories, and a con for it is that it still lacks a good Android operating system. I hope this video has helped you be able to decide on which device is better for you. The Banana Pi vs Raspberry Pi 2 comparison isn't an easy one due to a lot of similarities. If I have missed anything that you would like to share, then please drop us a comment below or over at PyMyLifeUp.com. Until next time, have a good one. Click here if you'd like some more information on the Raspberry Pi or the Banana Pi. If you would like to stay up to date on all our latest projects, guides and much more, then please subscribe.